this one I call techno clung run or techno wall piece and it functions with shadow like many other sound objects and it has 18 photo cells and each one makes a special repetitive sound structure. For me this is like a materialized score which is or a music piece which is not finished and that's the spectator who finishes it. This is an integrated circuit. Um, uh, counter. And this counter can uh, change frequencies. This is an oscillator which I use for making the rhythm of uh, the object. It, it will be a sound object and uh, the frequency is too high you can listen to it and I want to put to another frequency And that's a frequency I will use for constructing the rhythms. This one or this one. This is quicker and this is slower. This is too slow. And uh, here you can see the waveform of these sounds. Here I have uh, the integrated circuits and transistors, uh, uh, semiconductors. And here are the resistors, different values, and uh, these capacities, capacitors.
This is the part where the shadow of the spectator is transformed to an electrical pulse. It's a kind of amplifier. When I throw a shadow, I will get here a positive voltage. This sound sculpture is, is called a series of sounds and it reacts to shadow with this photo cell. And if, if I make a shadow, then there will be a series of sound and they will change after a while when I make long shadows. When I make many rhythmic shadows, the reaction is complex. This was an example for a very simple reaction. And this is complex. The beginning uh, of my career was strongly influenced by my father's profession. He was, a, he was a painter and already at the age of four I decided to be a painter. But uh, the war uh, changed my decision because uh, I saw how difficult it was for painters or artists in general to live from their work and so I decided to study physics. In my school time I already constructed a tape recorder for changing music to, to, to make a kind of um, musique concrète. That means uh, cutting tapes and changing speed and make music of noises, for example. Yes, I, I was interested in dance and music and theatre, all things which are happening in time. But at the same time, I was, I was very interested in painting and sculpture. So I tried to combine both. This is an example of a painting where I tried to introduce uh, th a third dimension, the time. And I tried it this way, that I made repetitive small structures which change in time. And here you see an other, other uh, action. And you can interpret these signs as a graphic notation of a dance or as a graphic notation of music. And I thought people look at it and make this interpretation, but they don't because they see in it a landscape. This was my one of the last pieces before I made my sound sculptures or my interactive sculptures. I tried to integrate the, or, or to, to, uh, to, to show 
time patterns in uh, two dimensions. And this is not possible. And so I came to the idea to introduce the time into the artwork in a sculpture, which normally has three, three dimensions. And I added a fourth dimension of time. And uh, the interactivity was uh, much more was more or less a side effect. started to change my painting into uh, cybernetic objects and it was uh, in, the, in the year 69, 1969 and uh, then suddenly galleries were interested to show my work and uh, I still worked in industry until 75 and then I quit Hoffman La Roche and could live from my work. Uh, when I worked in industry at Hoffman La Roche, I had a, a work which was very interesting for me. It was uh, in brain research, and there I got some influences uh, on my work. And at that time, I read a lot of, uh, about neurophysiology, of course, and uh, learned about nerve nets. But in principle, I was always interested in neurophysiology because uh, I think the brain is, uh, is f for me, a, a very interesting organ. And um, still today, I am curious about uh, the brain how, for example, a person learns or how uh, emotions and feelings are, what are neurons doing that a person feels something. When I started with my cybernetic objects, there were many different influences. There was painting, there was music, and there was psychology. And uh, in reading psychological books, I found one day a um, machine of Gray Walter. He was a, neophy a neophysiologist in London. And he constructed a little machine, which he called Machina Speculatrix, and he worked together with a psychologist and they wanted to study how simple um, creatures interact with each other. These are uh, the photocells and uh, this is a microphone. And uh, both influence the behavior of this machine. It reacts to the environment in two ways. Uh, in one way with these two sensors to shadow, like this. Can you see? This influences the two motors. And it has a microphone and if I make a sound, it changes its direction after a few, a few seconds. I started with objects 
where mechanical elements changed on the canvas. For example, something rotated. changed by light which was behind the canvas and probably in the first year after I began uh, I started with objects with sound and the sound for me was just another possibility to show time patterns I was not interested to make a sound sculpture. I wanted to show how the object changes its structure of reaction. And if you show uh, a, a time structure by mechanical or optical means, you cannot see details. But with sound, you can hear the smallest details in changing time patterns. So I decided to use uh, sound. This sound installation for Dona Ishing I called uh, Musical Cybernetic Environment, very long title. And uh, I had to produce a, a score for this festival, and uh, because I cannot produce a score, because 
everybody can play in a different way with it. So I invented the name uh, Reaction Score. In, in this score you can see the behavior of the spectator or the length and the rhythm of the shadows he produces and the reaction of the object. This line describes the action of the spectator with his shadows and this line shows the musical reaction of the object or for this uh, installation. This is the length of the shadow and you see uh, it's uh, long. Here I have short shadows and uh, in a very, very quick movement of the spectator and then the reaction is very complex. And in fact it was the first sound installation they showed in Donaueschingen. Now they show every year. And I participated once with a shadow orchestra a few years ago. The big installation with instruments. Here are some uh, sketches which I made before I started building this shadow orchestra. It's a kind of brainstorming to find uh, different ways of uh, instruments. For example, there is one with bells or with strings. And uh, this is a kind of harp with strings, like that, in a frame. And I had a motor here, and here was a fixed a device with a little ball. And when the motor was activated, this ball touched or struck the the strings by chance. And so I had a series of sounds which were aleatoric. That's one way of uh, producing in an object chance. Another way of producing chance is that the inner part of an object which is in, independent from outside interacts with a part which is dependent from the outside and this part is influenced by the spectator and both together give the reactions. I want to imitate in a, in a way the behavior of a living creature because in a living creature these two parts are existing. That's, that's my idea. It's a very simple way, it's not an imitation. It's an uh, uh, analogy, but I would say. I made a whole series of objects with blades, and I called them uh, Omar Panamarenko. And this object reacts to shadow.